Big Herc 916, positivity, motivation, never settle for average. You know we do it over here. Go to BigHerc916.com, pick you up some merch, grab you a t-shirt, tank top, hat, bar soap, and wash your ass. You don't want to walk around stinking because nobody likes a smelly booty. Hey man, hit that subscribe button, smash the like button, share the channel. I stumbled across this video and I wanted to share it with you guys because I know a lot of you are concerned Americans and at heart you believe in this country, but you know a country with no borders is not a country. So the hustle is in. We just ain't in on it. This news clip popped up. Tell me what you think. Nine city leaders are expressing shock after an NBC5 Investigates report we aired yesterday. We are waiting for records that show where the millions being spent on migrants is going. Some records we did receive show employees working at migrant shelters have made more than $135 an hour. NBC5 Investigates' Bennett Haberly is here more with what you've discovered, Bennett. Yeah, Kate and Alex, imagine making almost $200 an hour. These invoices show it has happened at the privately run shelters housing migrants. Today, I talked to aldermen who say they've been asking for receipts as well and had no idea of the figures until our report last night. These invoices obtained by NBC5 Investigates show employees of a private company, Favorite Staffing, which run the city's migrant shelters, have made at least $135 an hour, in some cases more. In one invoice, a facility manager made $14,000 in a week in December. Another invoice shows a nurse earned more than $20,000 in one week. Those figures do account for overtime. To see invoices like that are disgusting. They're outrageous, and they should be cause for an, investiga an immediate investigation. Do you have an accounting for all the dollars you're going? Uh, no, we haven't been, and I think that's uh, the big concern that came up today was that we're willing to accept federal dollars, we're willing to give dollars to these issues, but we need to see where every penny is spent. NBC5 investigates followed public records requests three months. So it looks like they make it anywhere from $125 to $200 an hour running these immigration locations, these camps, these facilities. Who's getting these contracts? How is this hustle going down? And who's selling out America for the dollar? Well, we know there's more than one selling out because it's all over the news and Congress. People are taking bribes, money everywhere. You know, it, it's, nobody really gives a damn. And as long as they can live in a gated community, it doesn't impact them. Plus, it's a vote situation. Somehow, some way, I know this shit ties into some votes to get more money in these people's pockets. How are you guys out there feeling about this whole flooding of the borders? And it's not just happening here. It's happening in uh, Italy. It's happening in, in France, a lot of other countries. But what I see here are... Military age men with no wives coming solo. Then I see a couple families here and there, and I see a bunch of kids. What are these men doing coming over here? What is the objective? See, we thought that if there was ever an attack on America, there would be some type of ships on the coast and an evasion from the the beaches or coming down from Canada or man they coming right through Mexico why aren't they stopping in Mexico Mexico is a, a sovereign country why, why, they got opportunities and stuff there why aren't they stopping there why are they coming here and why are our, our government officials giving these people housing cell phone Jobs, you know, through an app. There's an app from what I understand that these people can get jobs through this app. And yet we have millions of Americans here 
looking for employment who aren't getting access to the same app with job opportunities. And it's not legal immigration. It ain't like these people have taken the test to become legal citizens, have been screened for uh, uh, virus and viruses and all kinds of stuff. They're just coming in here, getting a, uh, getting a, a cell phone, uh, getting plane tickets, flying into other, other states. They're not, they're not marching in from Texas all the way to New York, all the way to Massachusetts, all the way to uh, the Midwest. They're, they're flying. They're getting plane. How's all this going down? We got people dying here of fentanyl. Fentanyl is crushing our country. This is the same shit that happened to China during the Opium Wars when Cecil Rhodes and the British flooded China to bring them to their knees for trade. And then essentially, that's how they acquired Hong Kong and that whole uh, deal where they pressed them with the drugs. See, drugs is actually more powerful than a bullet. If I get you hooked on a drug, you'll keep coming back. If I kill you, die, I don't make no more money off you. The drugs is a continual cycle. The drugs are crushing us. They're flooding into these cities. Who are going to house these people? The one governor was talking about housing your spare bedroom. You're going to house a foreigner in your spare bedroom, and then you think with these laws that you're going to be able to get them out of there? What if this person comes home and, and, and burns your house down? What if they do something to your kids or your family? What are the what are the repercussions? See the psychology. These people are crazy right now. But what can the people do? They house them over here in Chicago, across the street, and they getting one hundred twenty five dollars, two hundred dollars an hour working up in there. Somebody balling off this shit. But you got violence in the black communities. You got people dying in every community of the drugs. You got homeless. You got people here that are hungry, people that want uh, better job opportunities, but the borders. If it ain't the borders, then it's, it's money over to you already know where. You say it and you get shadow banned, so I'm, you already know where. Hawaii needs our help. What the hell is going on, man? This is what they say. It is my testimony that the border is secure. We have a secure border in that that is a priority for any nation, including ours and our administration. We have taken unprecedented action over the past year and a half to secure our border. And we have a process in place to manage migrants at the border. We're working to make sure it's safe and orderly and humane. The border is closed. We agree that uh, the border is secure. We're executing a comprehensive strategy to secure our borders. One of our highest priorities is to ensure that we have a secure border. And that is what we are doing. The border is secure. Whether people want to recognize it or not, America's going to have to really clean house and uh, there needs to be some accountability and uh, the people that are eating off of our tax dollars, we need to just clean house and get all new people, man. We need to get people who actually care, people who aren't lifetime tenor, who don't care, who are tied in with with the insider stock trading, who are getting kickbacks from all these major companies who are making all this big money. We need to get people who aren't corrupted, which how do we get them? How do we find them? How do we clean house? I'm just a small YouTuber, man. I see things. I, I try to share them with you guys. You know, uh, I've been to the pen. I got a felony, multiple felonies, but I, I, I look at the big picture. I see how they manipulated us in prison and I see how they're manipulating people on the street and I want to try to do something, you know, as far as sharing information so we can come together because divide is how they're winning. There's more of us than them. We have to put our resources together and make a change, man. That's all I'm saying. We got we to gotta save this country or else we're looking at the next big collapse, man. Big Herc 916. Officially, I only got one real spanking my entire life. My mom did the best a 14-year-old could do, raising me with love and instilling values that will last a lifetime. I was a straight-A student and lived to make her happy. So how did I go astray? A horrible stepdad that stole my self-worth and invoked fear 
turned me into a person that I've struggled to overcome. From skateboarding to selling drugs, gang banging in the juvenile hall, I got caught the same way many young promising men get caught up. I struggled to find my identity, getting mixed up in shootouts, crime, and the adult entertainment industry. This roller coaster continued as I juggled college, hustling, and Hollywood, eventually catching a federal bank robbery case. I found redemption in prison while serving a 120-month federal sentence and came out a man on a mission. I became a social media influencer with over half a billion views on YouTube and a life coach mentoring people all over the world. This is my journey against all odds. Go to BigHerc916.com and purchase you a bar of soap, one of the books I've written, a hat, a beanie, a t-shirt, tank top, or some detail spray for your car. Lockdown's over. Get your yard time in. Exclusively at FreshOutSeries.com. Hello, my name is Big Kirk 916 and I'm with the Wash Your Ass Committee and I'm traveling across America helping people wash their ass and get their booty holes clean. And I have with me here today, Wash Your Ass Soap. And this one in particular is Butt Naked Scrub, but I also have Festival, Oatmeal Milk and Honey, You're Making Me Crazy, um, Monkey Farts, and all these scents smell very good. They will help cleanse your body of funk and also make you feel better about yourself. So if you can go to BigKirk916.com, you can pick you up a bar. And my goal is to help America combat funk. Stop walking around with a crusty butt, smelly ball sack, and a funky hoo-ha. Big Herc said, wash that ass. Pick you up a t-shirt at freshoutseries.com.